When we study series, the, the main question that we try to answer is convergence or divergence. But if we can, we like to also say, if it converges, what does it converge to? And for the most part, this is actually a pretty challenging problem that we don't have a lot of answers to. For geometric series, we got an answer. We knew that if a geometric series converged, it converged to A over 1 minus R. So what I'm going to show you in this video is something called telescoping series, and they're another example of a sort of funky class of series that not only can figure out whether it converges or diverges, but if it converges, we can figure out what it converges to. So let's just begin with the sequence AN. I'm not even talking about the series right now, I'm just talking about the sequence. I want to answer, does it converge or does it diverge? So in other words, I want to study the limit as n goes to infinity of this particular series. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over n. And because it's a sequence, I can use a bunch of my rules for sequence, one of which was that as natural log is a continuous function, it allows me to, to take the limit on the inside. This is the natural log of the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n. And again, I'm allowed to make this move where I, I take this limit that previously was on the outside and I move it inside because I have a continuous function. Well, as n goes to infinity, 1 doesn't go anywhere, but 1 over n does. It goes to 0. So this is going to be the natural log of the value 1. And last time I checked, that thing was equal to 0. So I have a sequence, and it converges to 0. Now, if I turn to the question of series, well, my divergence test doesn't apply. Uh, it's not the case that we know it diverges because I had a, a non-zero limit of my sequence. But in this particular case, we, we have it being equal to zero, but that does not tell us whether it converges or diverges. We're going to have to do some further study to know whether the series converges or diverges, even though we know the sequence does. So let's turn to that question. And when I think about the sum here, I actually don't have any good way to deal with this just yet. Uh, it's not a geometric series, and honestly, geometric series are just about all we know right now. I could try writing down some partial sums like S1 and S2 and S3. That's usually a good strategy, but it's just going to be a sum of a bunch of natural logs, and it's going to look a little messy. So before I do that, I'm going to try a bunch of algebra and, and see whether I can clean things up a little bit. So first, I always like finding lowest common denominators, it's just kind of my thing, the natural log. This is n plus 1 divided by n. Finding common denominators is just wonderful. It always makes our lives easier. Not always. Usually. Well, now that I've got this lowest common denominator, we've got a quotient. Uh, all right. Uh, I know some log rules. I know that the log of a quotient is the natural log of n plus 1 minus, for the quotient, the natural log of n. And you might not immediately think that this algebra has helped us so much, but it will, and I'll show you how. Now that I've done the algebra, I'm going to write down a few of my partial sums. So first up, S1. S1 is just the sum of the first one term, so it's just A1, or in this case, it is going to be natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 1. And indeed, the natural log of 1 is going to be 0, but it's fine for now. Next up, S2. Well. This is the sum of the first two different terms, so a1 plus a2. I'm going to copy and paste from above. This is the natural log of 2 minus the natural log of 1. And then I'm going to add a second term. OK, so I'm looking back up here again. This is going to be, if n is 2, then it's the natural log of 2 plus 1 is 3 minus the natural log of 2. And I'm going to notice something that has appeared. It's that I can do a little cancellation. I have a, a natural log of 2 and then minus a natural log of 2, so I'm able to manipulate and cancel those two particular things. Interesting. Let's carry on, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip a few steps. I'm going to go all the way down to Sn, which is the A1 plus A2 all the way down to An. And I'm going to write out the few, first few steps for that. This is, well, copying and pasting for a little while, natural log of 2 minus natural log of 1 plus natural log of 3 minus natural log of 2 plus dot 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 dot. And my final one that I'm going to get is I'm going up to n. So it's going to be the natural log of, well, the n plus 1 minus the natural log of the n. OK, so now let's do the same thing that we did before, whether we want to see whether there's any cancellation that we can make. Uh, again, the natural log of 2 and the natural log of 1, those are going to cancel. but 
This natural log of 3, I can kind of imagine in my dot, 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 the next term was going to be the natural log of 4 minus the natural log of 3. It will cancel. And indeed, all the way down here at the end, this natural log of n is going to be the final term of the previous one. So all of the different terms are going to cancel except for the natural log of 1. This one, by the way, is just 0. And the natural log of n plus 1. So I'm going to say that the total result here is the natural log of n plus 1. So there we have it. I've got this really, really clean and easy formula for what my Sn is. The sequence of partial sums is equal to the natural log of n plus 1. Convenient. And it's convenient because of this sort of telescoping nature that every time you add a term, it, it adds something new, but it cancels something from the previous term. It added a, a natural log of 3, but it canceled the natural log of 2 that was there. And that sort of up, add something, subtract something from before. Add something, subtract something before. That's what we mean by telescoping. And the telescoping are really clean because they, they have all this cancellation. You just get this nice result at the end. And in particular, I can take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence of partial sums. So that's just the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of n plus 1. And natural log diverges for large values of n. So this thing is just going to be equal to infinity. And another way to say that is the sum of n equal to 0 to infinity of the an. So indeed, my series is going to be diverging to positive infinity because my sequence of partial sums is going to be diverging to infinity. So these telescoping series are kind of funky, and they give us another thing that we can compute. If it was the case that this, this limit of the SNs went to a number, then not only would we know it converged, but we would say it would converge to that number. In this case, we got a divergent one. But if it converged, we would not only know that it converged, we would know what it converged to.